All right. Um, hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> um, so Earth Day, since its inception in 1970, has activated and engaged over one billion people. Gotcha. And we want to take that number to two billion people. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the history of Earth Day, what I do, and of course how zero waste is actually the solution to everything we're gonna do. Next slide, please. So Earth Day, the first Earth Day was in 1970 where 20 million Americans protested and took to the streets for the environment. Now, at the time, that was actually 10% of the US American population. And that's striking for a couple of reasons other than just a huge um, you know, movement in the United States was that it actually led to the creation of the Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, and actually eventually the Environmental Protection Agency. Oh, thank you. It was mostly Dennis Hayes. Um, fast forward 54 years, um, you know, Earth Day at, is active in 192 countries with 150,000 partners globally, activating, of course, a billion people. And our goal back then and is still now to um, activate the environmental movement worldwide. Next slide, please. So um, Earth Day does a lot of things, but one of them is what I do. I run the Great Global Cleanup. Our goal is to rid the environment of waste and plastic pollution for good and eventually um, create a waste-free world. Now, this is actually the fifth year of the Great Global Cleanup. And in the last five years, we've had 15 million volunteers um, doing cleanups worldwide. But Earth has been doing cleanups since 1970. So actually, I got a question. Who here hasn't done a cleanup before? You got one person. Who here hasn't done a cleanup before? Yeah, one person. That's OK. That's OK. And you should go out and do a cleanup. They're a lot of fun. Um, I started doing cleanups when I was in college. I was looking for an internship in the environment. And the only organization to get back to me was National Cleanup Day. <laughs> and they, um, they reached out to me and they said, hey, go outside, pick up some trash, and uh, film some videos and post it on TikTok. And I said, easy enough. So went outside, and yeah, it's actually pretty easy to pick up trash, turns out. Um, and But what I started to realize was that as I was picking up these trash and bringing my friends along was that um, when I was not doing cleanup, I started to notice that there was trash and plastic everywhere. I was at University of Florida, and you know, walking on campus, I would notice that there was trash, plastic, just on campus, on the streets, every single place I went. And then it dawned on me the power of cleanups is not just in cleaning up, but also in how it you know, makes you realize how invasive the problem is. And outside of this room, because we're a bunch of crazy environmentalists, most people don't like um, acknowledge the actual issue in the environment. So what, you know, now that I run this campaign, what I see really is the power of it is that it's the gateway or rather really the gateway drug to the environmental movement. Because when people start doing cleanups and they start getting involved, then, you know, it, really, it makes them realize that they have the agency to make change in their environment and um, what they do. And on top of that, it's um, the greatest thing probably about it is that it's non-political. You know, you use words like climate change and sustainability and it makes a lot of people um, who aren't in this movement, it turns a lot of people off, especially in the United States, if they don't believe in climate change, which unfortunately is the case in this country. Um, but just like Jenny said yesterday, you know, sometimes you got to go shooting with them, right? You got to go meet them on their level. And the great thing about cleanups is not for a lot of people in the United States, it's not just about, um, you know, the environment or picking up trash or being involved in this movement. It's about, you know, community. It's about taking care of your own community. And a lot of people, even if they don't believe in climate change or the environmental movement or all this stuff, they want to take care of their community and they want to take care of their health. They want to take care of their families. But there's still an issue. See, cleanups, they don't work. They're not, they're not going to solve this issue. They're not the solution to this issue. And that's not to say that they're useless because, of course, they get people on board to the environmental movement. But at the end of the day, I mean, I just told you we've been doing cleanups since 1970. That is 54 years of doing cleanups. And if we go out, you know, side down the city, I'm sure we can find the same amount of trash there as 54 years ago. Um, so we do need structural and systematic changes. Next slide, please. But first, I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, these are some of our partners around the world who are doing cleanups. And um, yeah, they're a heck of a lot of fun. Um, there's nothing like being knee deep in a river pulling out trash. It's something about it is a good time. Um, and the, the truth is, is that, you know, 
even if people aren't connected to the environmental movement or feel like it's a global movement, they want to take care of their community. Next slide, please. And so one of the things we do at Great Global Cleanup is we develop this uh, global cleanup map, as we call it. And um, we have cleanups. These are from our partners all over the world. You can add your cleanups to this map. And if you're a volunteer looking to get involved, a lot of people, thank you, a lot of people come to the um, you know, earthday.org to find out how to get involved. You go to the map, you find a cleanup near you, and hopefully get involved. You know, we need some help in some places around the world. We're doing pretty good in Europe and the United States. Um, next slide, please. So I came to this conference, honestly, not knowing a lot about zero waste. I thought I did, and then I tried last Saturday. Um, very difficult. I tried to be zero waste and international day zero waste, and everywhere I turned, I was creating more trash, which was unfortunate. Um, so I was really grateful to come to this conference and actually get to hear from you guys who are the experts on how to you know, live zero waste. And there's a lot of stuff I'm excited to take back to the great global cleanup and in my own life. And if anyone needs to know how to uh, actually do zero waste, talk to Sammy. She knows everything there is to know about how to be zero waste. <laughs> um, but here's the thing. As cleanups are what leads people or is a way that leads people to join the environmental movement, Zero waste is what leads the environmental movement as its ethos for how we live day to day and how we interact with the environment. Um, and there was a lot of people talking about behavior science. Um, something in behavior science is that if you activate between five to 10% of a population, then the rest of the population will join on along with that. And um, yeah, so here's the deal though. Zero waste is not just in its own corner of the environmental movement. Zero waste is actually the leader of the environmental movement because it doesn't touch just clean energy or a clean environment, but it touches, you know, preservation, conservation, climate education, and all the different aspects of the um, of the environment. So as you guys who are the experts in zero waste, not me, I'm just a guy who likes to pick up trash. Um, as you guys plan and execute partnerships, whether it's here or wherever else you go, you know, make sure, keep in mind that you are the leaders of the environmental movement because what you do touches every single piece of it and also, you know, outside of it as well with mental health and, you know, physical responsibility. Um, so I think I got a minute. Um, so when I was in college, a lot of things happened in college. University of Florida is great. I had a professor and, uh, you know, in a sustainability class, and he would always have a le guest lecturer come in and talk to the class. And this one um, professor uh, came in to speak about climate change and he clearly knew a lot about climate change because for the next hour he showed us graph after graph of how basically the world's gonna end you know you've seen those like uh yeah you've seen the hockey stick graphs they're like it's like you know co2 levels are like this and then like 19 shoots up right and he um basically i don't think this was his uh his you know point but i left that class like being like well world's gonna end you know pretty much so but as I kind of got into this movement and I met the people who do it, I met the people who do cleanups and meeting all you guys, um, I can say with full confidence that we are actually going to stop this issue, you know, because it's us who are out there making these, um, making these changes. So my friends and I, we're going to be in the river pulling out trash because that's what we like to do. But I know zero waste is going to be the reason that the trash doesn't end up in that river in the first place. Thank you.